Countries in Southern Asia, like India, are some of the top producers of cotton worldwide. Cotton is grown on 2.5% of the world's land, but accounts for a whopping 16% of the world's insecticides and 6.8% of the world's herbicides. India is the second largest world exporter of cotton. 95% of cotton farming is controlled by Monsanto. Cotton production is one of the top four GMO users in the world, second only to soy. Cotton is considered one of the world's dirtiest crops. 77 million farmers suffer from poisoning each year. China produces a large amount of the world's garment materials, including clothing fibers and leathers. The production process involves harsh chemicals and poor working conditions, resulting in danger to workers and the environment. China's textile industry produces 2.5 billion tons of wastewater and 3 billion tons of soot every year. A single mill can use 200 tons of water for each ton of fabric it dyes. These toxic dyes then wash off from the mills and pollute waterways. It is estimated that 90% of workers that are in the leather industry will die before the age of 50 from cancers and other diseases. The state of the garment industry in Bangladesh is not news to most. After the infamous Rana Plaza collapse in 2013, the world has become more aware of the Bangladesh fashion system. However, not much has been done to improve it. Low wages and a lack of regulation are what still makes Bangladesh one of the top contributors to our fashion supply today. Abusive, cramped, and unsafe environments are typical conditions in these overworked factories. Bangladesh also has the lowest minimum wage in the world, an average of just 26 cents per hour. Garment workers are forced to work 14 to 16 hours per day, seven days a week, and about 85% of these people are women. The textile industry is a prime example of the rich get richer and the poor get poorer philosophy. A very small number of American and European billionaires control the majority of the world of fashion. The cheapest and quickest fashion is their main goal, and because of this, many corners are cut in how the clothes are made. Until the 1960s, America sourced and produced 95% of its own clothing. Today, only 3% is sourced and produced in the US. When purchasing a piece of clothing, only 0.6% of your money goes towards the actual garment worker. It takes a garment worker 18 months to make what a fashion CEO makes on a lunch break. Corporate brands are churning out such an excessive amount of new designs that originality is being compromised. Brands stealing work from independent artists is now a common thing. Over 40 artists have accused Zara of plagiarism. These artists come forward after LA-based artist Tuesday Basin's photos went viral, proving Zara stole her work. Additional side effects of the industrialization of fashion is the loss of cultural skills and crafts. Textiles, such as weaving and embroidery, have long been a beautiful heritage passed down through generations. Today, 61% of companies do not know where their garments are made. 76% do not know where they are woven, knitted, or dyed. And 93 do not know the origins of the fibers themselves. Our demand for fast fashion has risen drastically in the past few decades. The turnover rate for clothing has increased at an alarming rate. Many people buy clothes only to wear them once. The fashion industry is designed to make you feel out of trend after just one week. This excessive need for clothing is having an impact on the rest of the world that many people either don't know about or choose to turn a blind eye to. Only a couple decades ago, we had two fashion seasons a year. Now, we have 52 micro seasons, with retailers pumping out new styles every week. North Americans buy 20 billion garments a year. That is 68 items per person per year, or one item per week. We can purchase 400% more clothing than we did just 20 years ago. However, despite us consuming so much more, we are spending even less. Buying more and spending less has its consequences both on the lives of workers and on the environment. Along with America, Europe plays a very big role in the fashion industry. Cities like Paris, London, and Milan have been some of the main influencers and innovators on fashion since it became industrialized. Celebrities, models, and fashion shows now have almost as much of an impact as artists and fashion designers. Many brands that started out in Europe have evolved to become the fast fashion American icons that we know today. The 2017 Paris Fashion Week cost about 99.5 million in total. Fashion shows consume a lot of money and are run by big brands like Victoria's Secret. It is very easy to discard our unwanted items and never think about them again. Many people don't know what happens after they throw something away and the impact that it has. The waste that we create here in North America and Europe is either sent to a landfill, incinerated, or sent back to developing countries. Each year, 
11 million tons of textile waste is generated. The U.S. alone trashes 25 billion. That is 82 pounds per person per year. Of donated clothing items, only 1 in 10 are resold. Synthetic fibers take 200 years to decompose, and 1 pound of textile waste emits 7 pounds of carbon dioxide. Through landfills, incineration, and buildup in third world countries, our textile waste is producing very negative effects, contributing to climate change. So what can you do? Now that you know your stuff, do something about it. Invest in your fashion. Avoid buying cheap, poor quality clothes that will go out of style in a month. Buy second hand to save the landfill and reverse the effects of climate change. When traveling, buy textiles native to the country to keep traditional crafts alive and to support individual artists. Don't throw your clothes in the trash. If unable to donate, look into a textile recycling program in your area. Or get one started. Demand change. Ask brands for transparency in the sourcing of their clothes, and whenever possible, buy your clothing from fair trade and organic companies. Visit Trusted Clothes website to discover more about the fashion industry and what you can do to help.